The first thing we needed to do before we made this film was to do a scout. And so we drove to, to San Francisco to meet with the guy who forecasts uh, surf forecast for Mavericks. So we looked at the break from the cliff and you can't really tell much other than it's way out there. We went back down to the parking lot. A couple guys said we're paddling out and, and Mark said, want to go check it out. You can kind of see it from the ground floor. It's a creepy spot. I didn't really want to do it. We get down to the water's edge and uh, there's a bunch of seals up in the shallows. We didn't think much of it and we jump in the water and we start paddling and it's an extremely long paddle. You know, you paddle through this big lagoon then around the reef which kind of juts out. We're commiserating about how out of shape we are and paddling along. The next thing I know this really violent thing happens. What had happened was, was as we were paddling along around the edge of the reef we were in deep water, probably 45 feet of water and a great white was obviously kind of tracking us and looking up and saying the one on the back's the weak link i'm going for that one so he or she got up ahead of steam and came right up below the board and hit it perfectly we went shooting up in the air i kind of hinged up because i grabbed the nose of the board and my legs and body went up in the air and when we came back down the shark bit down so his head would have been covering the whole center of the board and i kind of laid on top of him i remember seeing his tail just driving wildly, white water splashing everywhere. It just was really violent. And then he was gone. After the shark let go, it swam briefly towards Mike and disappeared. And we both, I mean, I was immediately, uh, you know, screaming and incoherent. He said that his first thought was, what do I tell his wife? Because I think he just got bit in half by a shark. What had happened was nothing to me. Now, you know, this is not a big space to hide from a 13 or 14 foot shark, but somehow, you know, that's how it worked out. I mean, it was, I, I don't think you can get any luckier than I did. Once the adrenaline wash sort of washed over me and was gone and I was, I was just completely exhausted, I sort of was reflecting on what all this meant as far as, as the film was concerned. And, and I thought this was a pretty auspicious beginning for something so terrible to happen and then to be so lucky the outcome, I thought that meant that this was, was a film I had to make.